amid deepening concerns over state-backed French Islamophobia, a global coalition of Muslim NGOs has teamed up to take on the government. 36 Muslim organizations from 13 countries have submitted a joint complaint to the UN Human Rights Council, urging them to take action against France's increasingly hostile policies. The UK-based Muslim Public Affairs Committee was one of the groups that signed the complaint. What Macron is doing is weaponizing secularism, let us say, a French secularism in particular, for his Islamophobic agenda. And he's justifying this by stating that French Muslims are essentially causing separatism, when in reality he's framing this, all the policies all um, are very the epitome of trying to frame it as a Muslim problem in a very similar way that Hitler did uh, uh, with the Jews and tried to frame all the ills of what's happening in Germany as a Jewish problem. Tensions between the French President Emmanuel Macron and the Muslim world has been at an all-time high since last year, when Macron introduced new legislation targeting so-called Islamic extremism and defending deeply offensive caricatures insulting Islam's holy prophet. The caricatures led to furious worldwide protests, while the anti-Islamism laws paved way for a local crackdown, which saw 76 mosques forced to close the country's biggest Muslim charity and an anti-Islamophobia organization banned, dozens arrested and hundreds of planned deportations. In October, the founder of Baraka City, Idris C. Hamedi, experienced firsthand France's new approach. After his home was violently raided by riot police, after he condemned Islamophobic government ministers and an anti-Islam activist on Twitter. For example, if they sent me a message, a strong message, with the special forces, they closed my uh, my organization, they closed the CCIF, they closed the, the mosques, they closed the law of organizations. So the Muslims around Baraka City and another organization like that, they will be afraid. It, it's very complicated to explain you, to, to show you the feeling of the Muslim, uh, the Muslim community. But with beard or without beard, you have a problem. With hijab or without hijab, you have a problem. Now the target, the mind of the Muslim community. The passionate street protests may have stopped for now, but the Muslim response to Macron's anti-Islam policies hasn't finished yet. With an additional complaint due to be sent to the European Union later this year, with the hopes of forcing Macron into a U-turn on these policies. Robert Carter, Press TV. London. And Robert Carter, the man who we just saw on screen there, is with us for more. Rob Macron claims all he's trying to do is protect France from, quote, radical extremism and terrorism. So why does it feel like this is a concerted effort to crush spirits and minds and an entire religion? Well, I think that the only person that can be blamed for that is uh, the French president himself. If you actually uh, follow his comments uh, and interviews on the subject, his language is, uh, can only be described as extremist in its, uh, in its nature. Uh, he has conflated the religion of Islam and essentially all Muslims with it, the actions of extremists and takfiris, which are, of course, uh, a minority criminal element. But what he's done is he's done what typical Islamophobes in the West tend to do, is when one uh, criminal commits a crime, even a horrific crime such as murder, he then conflates and blames the religion of Islam as being part of the problem. Not French imperialist foreign policy in the Middle East. No, not at all. No mention of that. It's only focused on the religion. And why does he do that? Because there are political benefits to uh, scapegoating the Muslim minority in France. Obviously, Islamophobia in France is on the rise. There is a right-wing uh, populist vote, which he's hoping to profit from. And he's done very well, in fact, in kind of reviving his political legacy by attacking uh, Islam and trying to portray himself as some kind of uh, Napoleon fighting off a uh, a foreign invader or some, some, something like this. But his language is very dangerous. He, uh, it threatens is dangerous, Rob, but freedom. what would be mentioned here is that France is essentially a non-Muslim country. So shouldn't Muslims accept a degree of secularism in their lives? Well, according to the French constitution, it is a secular republic. However, 
the definition of secularism in French society is that religion stays out of the political sphere, but also the political sphere stays out of the lives of uh, religious people's uh, religious people's beliefs and daily religious habits. And this is something which Macron has actually breached first. He's trying to police the thought of Muslims. He doesn't want them to believe any kind of political identity, which is contrary to French state policy. And this is, of course, a breach of people's human rights. He's also breaching people's privacy by uh, spying on them, essentially. Anyone who's been flagged up at schools, including children, can be uh, had their homes raided. And he's also breaching people's rights to religious practice by closing down mosques, closing down the biggest charity, closing down the biggest anti-Islamophobia organization in the country as well. So this just reeks of uh, authoritarianism, of totalitarianism. And the fact that it's targeting a minority, a religious minority only in the legislation uh, raises a lot of fears that this could escalate. And it's based on racism and uh, scapegoating, Amina. And very briefly, Rob, how successful might this uh, global complaint letter be to the UN? Uh, we have yet to see how the UN will respond to this. Uh, I think that the UN will actually potentially uh, intervene and at least offer some kind of commentary, which could be quite damning to France's government's uh, handling. Also, uh, we hope that the organization has more action planned. They wouldn't go into details when I spoke to MPAC UK, but they did say there was more plan. Uh, there was a plan being put in place. So the fact that there is more pressure being applied to the French government, and we haven't just essentially let it die away with the headlines, move on and ignore the problem, this is a positive sign. And it's important that Muslims mm -hmm. across the globe continue the pressure. All right. Wonderful. Good to have you, as always, Robert Carter.